the expulsion of a man's seminal fluids induces a phenomenon akin to a male reproductive cycle or the male period. In males, each occurrence of orgasm elicits comparable psychological consequences, similar to those experienced during the menstrual cycle in females. These repercussions manifest as irritability, feelings of depression, mood fluctuations, increased fatigue, reduced concentration, heightened impatience, and the tendency to turn his back on the world. After relinquishing his semen, he diminishes his capacity to allocate resources to his partner and children, coupled with a tendency for temporary social withdrawal. This becomes apparent following instances of sexual intercourse. In immediate observation, individuals of the female gender who have engaged in sexual activity with him have reported a discernible alteration in his mood, a reduced level of interest and a conspicuous tendency towards social withdrawal following the male ejaculation. His transformation is immediate, marked by a noticeable shift in demeanor. The once present glint in his eye has now dissipated entirely. He averts his gaze from her, lying in the bed beside her. Just moments ago, his passion and deep interest were unmistakable, accompanied by a willingness to exert significant effort on her behalf. His current disposition reflects a marked indifference, approaching avoidance towards both the act of sexual intercourse and the presence of his partner. Indeed, a palpable sense of repulsion has materialized within the man, directed not only at the act of sex itself, but also towards the woman involved. This sensation of disgust emerges almost immediately following an orgasm. It is noteworthy that the repercussions on the male, both in terms of physical and psychological well-being, endure far beyond the initial moments following ejaculation. This influence persists for a considerable duration, spanning at least 24 hours subsequent to the expenditure of his seminal energy. Research suggests that there may be a correlation between the occurrence of domestic conflicts and the timing of a man's orgasm. When a man engages in infrequent sexual activity, his reserves of sexual energy and semen tend to be higher, which can mitigate some of these effects. However, even with just one orgasm within a month, some noticeable effects may be observed. For men who habitually engage in frequent orgasms, there appears to be a potential similarity to premenstrual syndrome or PMS in women, albeit with distinct differences. This hidden PMS syndrome in men may manifest more prominently in those who are excessively indulgent in orgasmic activities, as their physiological and psychological resources may already be strained due to frequent discharge. In such cases, the impact of any additional orgasmic release can be more pronounced, akin to someone who has already overdrawn at his bank account. Now consider that the female gets hit with this only once monthly. She experiences this loss only once every 28 days. It is dictated by nature once a month, but no more. But consider the average male, most of who are sex addicts. He chooses to have many, many periods with loss of vital seminal power throughout the month. So what we have in our modern society are men on permanent PMS. Qualities of nobility, patience, magnanimity, energy and strength accrue in men who conserve their semen. But now such men as these are rare. The standard for men's behavior has dropped lower and lower over the centuries. Women are accustomed to men on PMS because the men are almost always in this state. Because men are chronically on PMS, it is difficult to perceive the contrast between a psychological low or high. Men are always at a low. For this reason, women have actually become psychologically superior to men. Men and women should be intelligent and realize this. In the sexual discharge, nature is intending to give us something very great, the birth of a new human being. Thus, we should realize why nature extracts a penalty from men for sexual discharge, just as nature has always done for women 
in their monthly period. Man's chronic state of premenstrual syndrome is the main cause of the destruction of the planet and the deterioration of society. In nature's grand plan, how often should a man release his vital energy? The answer lies in observing women who are more closely attuned to nature's rhythms. Nature suggests that a man's maximum should align with the monthly cycle once a month. Exceeding this natural frequency can lead to psychological imbalances, making a man less harmonious with nature compared to a woman. In the tapestry of existence, a subtle shift has occurred over centuries, rendering women, in general, as bearers of moral and psychological fortitude. Their reservoirs of patience, emotional equilibrium, reason, and capacity to navigate complex and demanding daily lives are testaments to this ascendancy. It's reflected in their longer lifespans. This transformation finds its roots in the conservation of vital sexual energy, which women, by nature's design, achieve more adeptly than men. The balance of power and moral ascendancy has been steadily shifting towards women, driven by men's profligate expenditure of seminal energy. It is in this natural order that women have assumed roles of prominence, and this trajectory appears unalterable as long as men continue to squander their vital essence. However, it is within a man's power to reclaim his essence and change into a different breed, which is a rarity in today's world. Through this reclamation, his relationships with women are restored, and his positive influence upon the world reignites. The practice of semen retention becomes the key to this transformation. Indeed, the intricacies of men's orgasms bear a profound cost, a cost discernible in nature's grand design. Nature, an ever-eloquent architect, scatters hints throughout creation. Contemplate on this straightforward truth. When a woman unites with a man in passion, she receives a precious gift. The bestowal of a man's essence upon her is not merely a fleeting act. It yields substantial physical and psychological sustenance to the feminine spirit. Ancient Chinese Taoists, in their wisdom, articulated this profound phenomenon. Her body and spirit is positively nourished by the tract of the seminal substance deposited in her by the male. It is no mere coincidence that women radiate an ethereal glow after such an intimate communion. For within her, she bears the luminous traces of that shared union, a testament to nature's exquisite balance and benevolence. Assuming that the intricate dance of creation unfolds as nature intends, the woman, in her own profound way, reciprocates with a gift beyond measure. Following the relinquishment of his essence, the female, uniquely equipped for this sacred task, bestows upon the world a precious and innocent miracle, an infant human being. Indeed, a child represents the pinnacle of creation, the most sublime manifestation of a man and woman's union. Reflect upon the potency of the male seed, so profound that it evokes from the female such a powerful creation. Therefore, one must fathom the exalted worth of a man's seminal power. These treasures should never be treated with disregard, for to do so is to the detriment of the very man who possesses them. Man, in his original design, was not intended to indulge in more than one orgasm per month, lest he descend into a state of low psychological equilibrium. It is a result of man's excessive squandering with his essence that women in our modern age have ascended in social and cultural influence over men. It was a necessity born of circumstance, for women had no alternative. Man, regrettably, has forsaken his once lofty psychological and moral stature, abandoning the nobility inherent in his essence.